Well hello folks and happy new year to you. In this video I'm going to give you a super quick tour of what's new with the Trongate framework. For anyone who's in a hurry, we've made some changes mostly to do with form validation. They're not breaking changes, but we have pretty significantly changed how this simple members module works. So I'm going to run you through some of the changes that have happened, in fact pretty much all of them. And here we go. Now, first of all, if I take you, uh, probably best if we look at source tree here. So this was our last V number here. We are still V1 forever. <laughs> and uh, the first thing that we did, little change to a class here, an image class, no big deal at all, actually. Then we had a little contribution that I'm super grateful for. For anyone who has submitted pull requests, I'm really, really grateful and I apologise for not getting back to all of these soon enough. Um, maybe some of them have been fixed, I'm not entirely sure, but in any event, we do have one or two new contributors and we're always grateful for that. So somebody had suggested that there was a way to improve the make rand string function. So we have a little function called make rand string in the framework. It looks like this. So you would just say rand is make rand str. You would pass in a character length such as four. And if you want, you would pass in two. That's optional. And that would convert to uppercase. So this is now more random. And uh, you can check the code out if you want. I did notice that there was a little bug in it, by the way, last night. If you added 5, it never returned a random string with a length of 5, but that's now been fixed as well. So basically, a little improvement under the hood. It doesn't change how we work. Nothing to worry about. And let's move on. The next two changes, I think, are the significant ones here. Well, actually, I think maybe three. So. They're mostly to do with form validation. If I open up our form helper here and take you to, pardon me, it's not form helper, uh, validation helper. And if I take you to valid email, this is a little thing that helps us to check that an email address is valid. And this has been improved quite considerably. So now, not only are we checking things like the, the length of the email, but we are running a little check if you happen to have an internet connection and we're checking to make sure that the domain name is valid. So what this means is that when you're doing form validation, if you now run something through valid email, then it's going to actually make sure that not only is it formatted correctly, but the domain exists. So, for example, if somebody submits an email address like this, .com, it won't allow it. Uh, or, pardon me, info at blah 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 .com. It will not allow it. I'll demonstrate this in a minute. So, that's been improved. Again, it doesn't change how you code. And a couple of other things that might be useful. I've added in a thing called filter string. And so you would use this for filtering data submitted via a text area. So you'll remember that if we have a text area, let's say called info, and we say info is post info, that will give us the posted text area. If we say comma true, it's going to run the thing through filter string. So this is what happens when you say comma true. You can see that we're doing strip tags. We're applying a little bit of XSS filtering and we're converting double spaces to single spaces and then we're removing leading and trailing white space. So that's filter string. And previously, all it did was trim and strip tags. So it's a little bit more advanced, you know. Now the next one is a new function that I've added called filter name. And this is one that I'm quite excited about because we had problems recently with comedians going onto the forum and registering names like this 
you know, my own username's Davcon, but they would do things like this. Or if somebody had a username, let's say, that was Rockstar, nobody did, but if they did, you could hypothetically do things like this and just cause all sorts of problems. Um, or even things like this, and you could end up with two different usernames, but each one having the same URL title. So this was a weakness, and as simple as it may sound, it's actually a really, really difficult thing to solve. So, I've now created filter name, and I have to tell you, in all honesty, I never wrote this. In what may just be an industry first, I can tell you that this was created by OpenAI. I had a long conversation. I call OpenAI my new employee. And I'm really happy with this one. So the way that it works, you can kind of see what it does here, but the main thing that you need to be aware of is that when somebody submits a username, so let's say username is um, Charlie or something like that. Well, you can apply that or you can run that through, let's call it safe username. You can run that through our filter name function. So you can pass in the username, but as an option, now you don't need to do this. But let's say you wanted to allow some special characters. Maybe you're okay with people having an exclamation mark. That's fine. Maybe you have some exotic characters of some sort and uh, you can add those as well as part of an array. So that's going to just filter out characters that are non-standard. Now at the moment, it will allow uh, lowercase a to z and uppercase a to z and also zero to nine. I know that that's not perfect, especially if you're not a native English speaker, but at least you now have the ability to add in an array of characters that are acceptable to you. So hopefully that will be useful for people from places like Germany and Iceland, you know. Now, the best way to show you this stuff in action is to show you a new instance of the Trongate framework that I've just downloaded. And I've also just downloaded the new simple members module because it has changed. And so to give you an idea, I've now just set this up just before coming on. And to give you an idea of how it works, if I go to this join page and I say username is go Johnny go go little exclamation mark submit. You'll see that it says the username contains characters that are not allowed. That's pretty cool, right? Now, here's another thing. If we say info at example.com and submit, the email address field contains an invalid domain name. So even though the email address is correctly formatted, we've now got a pretty sophisticated valid email function as part of our framework. Now, if I show you the code for the members module, you'll see a few tweaks. First of all, you can see that we've now got these sub modules here. So for example, if I log in, which I can do just now, take a look at the URL and you'll see that it's members hyphen account. Same goes for update details and all of that stuff. It's members hyphen account. So what's happened is I've made a sub-module that handles all of the situations when a member is logged in. And I've also got a sub-module called join that handles the join process. And of course, they have their corresponding view files. And it's just a beautiful separation of concerns compared to what we had previously, which was a big, big, massive members module. So just to show you how these new things work in real life, let's imagine that we're on this join page here and we're going to submit this form, right? So that's going to go to submit join and you can see that we're saying callback username check 
and callback email check. I'm going to take you to username check. Now this is within the join sub module. And there's really two things that we're doing here. The first is we're making sure the username is correctly formatted. Then we're making sure that the username is available. I assume that you understand what this one's doing. But this one is kind of new. So you can see that what we're doing is we're taking our submitted username. We're running it through filtered username. Now in this example, I'm happy for just normal standard characters to be used. If there's a mismatch, we return an error message that says the username contains characters that are not allowed. Now, if you happen to be from Germany or Iceland or something, you might want to go into username check and add in an array of our allowed characters. And you can add in your fancy O's and all of that stuff. All of those cool Viking characters, you know. So that's why that's like that. Now the email check is pretty much the same. We're making sure the email address is available. But you'll notice that I'm not doing any filters or anything with this. And you may wonder why. The answer is because when we do submit join, I'm already running it through valid email. So valid email takes care of all of that stuff. And if somebody submits an email address, in fact, I don't think it'll even get past this because the form, but nevertheless, you can be assured that valid email is going to make sure it's properly formatted anyway. So that's why we can get away with uh, having email check being quite simple. I think that's all I have for you. So anyway, let me wish you a happy new year. I really, really hope that this is a good one for you. Thank you for standing by me and let's make this one a year to remember for all of the right reasons. I'll see you later.